everyone welcome to the channel one star continuous knowledge excellence my name is karuna singh in this video we will get to know about the gold nanoparticles faraday and nano gold and synthesis of gold nanoparticles so now our expert professor himadri bibo hidar who is associated with national center in agro nanotechnology terry dyker nanotechnology center india he has 31 years of academic experience in teaching and research His area of expertise includes nanoscience and nanotechnology, nanobio interface science, soft matter science, polymer physics, biophysics. We'll explain you in detail about this topic. So to get complete information, watch full video without skip. We come to one specific case of gold nanoparticles. Why I am talking about gold nanoparticles? That will be clear as we go further, and you'll be surprised to know that the nano material. or gold nanoparticle in particular was synthesized by michael faraday way back in 1856 and the methodology that he used at that point of time to make gold nanoparticle surprisingly is the same what we do today so the synthesis process that he adopted was this what is shown on the slide here he took this gold salt hacl4 here gold precursor dissolve it in it is a water soluble add glucose to it drop wise change the ph to basic ph by using sodium hydroxide ph should be around 10 or so 9.5 10 and allow the reaction to continue keep it under continuous stirring for about 10 to 15 minutes this solution will turn into a ruby red solution here which indicates the formation of gold nanoparticles number 1 number 2 after the nanoparticles are formed these excess glucose molecules that are still available they will coat themselves on the surface of the nanoparticle creating a steric hindrance so that two nanoparticles do not come close to each other and form a cluster and then they form larger cluster then super clusters and finally become bulk gold that is avoided by capping this gold nanoparticles with glucose and this thing was done by michael faraday in the year of 1856 and even today for making metal nanoparticles we follow this same route and this because this is the simplest method of making metal nanoparticles you can take a precursor salt here it was gold if you want to make a silver nanoparticle you take silver nitrate solution here if you want to take copper nanoparticle you take is correspondingly some copper sulfate solution there you want to make iron nanoparticles there you take some iron oxide iron some other salt para sulfate free sulfate solution wait 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 are you worry about your project training dissertation internship don't think too much because nano science and technology consortium in short nstc is giving you a golden opportunity to do the same tasks nstc also conducts workshop on amazing topics so if you want to register in the workshop The registration link is given in the description box below, or you may go to the website www.nanoschool.in, where you can easily enroll in the workshops. So just check it out right now. Use any reducing agent. Glucose is the cheapest, so you can use citric acid, hydrazine, many other chemicals are there which can are excellent reducing agents, and you have corresponding. nano particles dispersion available here so this is general methodology for making metallic nano particles and this is what he did so many years ago once this gold nano particles have been made this is the absorption spectra of this thing uv visible absorption spectra uv visible spectrometer is there almost in every lab even in undergraduate labs so you take a uv visible spectra of this typical absorption maximum comes at about 520 530 nanometer this is lambda x here okay but as the particle size of the nano gold increases 
from 10 to 100, you see that absorption maxima, which was at 520 earlier, has now moved to something like here. This is about 570, 580. So there is a something like 60, 70 nanometer red shift in the absorption maxima. Remember this, this is an indication of the increase in size. So when their size is increased, absorption maxima shifts to the right. You see the absorption maxima at a higher wavelength. You will see how this correlates with the challenge that we have taken of visible detection of analytes. That is related to this thing. That's the reason I'm giving this information. Smaller size, you have absorption maxima at lower wavelength. Larger size, absorption maxima moving towards the right means to the red side of the spectrum. So particle size related to wavelength. We'll see the next one. Let me show this one. Next, this one first. Yeah. Then we go back to the last one. You see, particles are smaller. Look at the color. This is oranges. Then becomes yellowish, then light brown, and then dark brown, and then red is, then become dark red, and then ruby red, and there's very dark ruby red here. As particle size becomes larger, color of the solution goes towards the red, deep red side, towards the infrared. So this is something that can be utilized, this information, intelligently to make a sensor. Okay, keep this in mind. I hope you like this video. Here, I would like to give you an important information that Nano Science and Technology Consortium organized the nanotechnology workshops on amazing topics. Also, I would like to tell you about the initiatives of NSTC in which you can also be a part of. The very first one is mentorship, second, patent commercialization, third, joint product development, fourth, research projects, fifth, consultancy services, sixth, nanomaterials for your research projects, 7th training programs or customized training programs, 8th workshops or customized workshops. So that's all. If you want to see these type of videos, then please do comment. We will definitely reach out to you. Subscribe to the channel Knowledge Try and hit the bell icon to never ever miss an update. Thank you. For more updates, subscribe to our channel. Click the links shown on the screen to stay connected.